one in 10 women has endometriosis. Our mothers, daughters, sisters, friends, partners, their strength, their strength, in numbers. Their strength, their strength in numbers. There is hope. Hope through education. Hope through advocacy. Hope through research. Women are radiant, resilient, inspiring, powerful, fierce. Tonight, we come together as, as much, much, much more, more than, than one in 10. ten. I have to be honest with you, I'm used to telling other people's stories for a living, so the chance to tell mine tonight is very unique, although being up on stage is not. So it's a very personal night for so many of our endo warriors out here, so please a round of applause for all of the women and for all of our healthcare providers on the front lines of this every single day. You're going to meet so many of them tonight. But first, welcome to the 11th Annual Endometriosis Foundation of America EndoFounds Blossom Ball. Tonight, we are celebrating the endometriosis community, industry at leaders, advocates, doctors, and surgeons, researchers, and of course, all of the incredible women who are with us tonight, courageously sharing their stories. Thank you for coming and being part of this network to create change. To get the evening started, I'd like to recognize this evening's Blossom Ball co-chairs, Madeline Rudin and Farah Moynian. Our EndoFound co-founders, Padma Lakshmi, joining us tonight. Dr. Tamer Sechkin, the EndoFound board of directors. Our EndoFound executive director, Dr. Tracy Haas, presenting sponsor, Northwell Health, and all of you who are here with us tonight. And so many of the other women tonight share this statistic. We are one in 10, I am one in 10. We are more, as we know, than one in 10. I'm also a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a news anchor, an entertainment reporter, and a lifestyle host for ABC News in Philadelphia. And my story starts just before my 11th birthday when my personal journey with endometriosis began, when my cycle started. In fact, the pain, the migraines, the hemorrhaging, the nausea, all of this came before I even had health class. So I didn't even know a thing about a cycle before my cycle found me. I was a fifth grader laying on the cold ceramic tile of our nurse's office at school waiting for my mother to pick me up. I know this is a story that so many of you share. While we always suspected that this would be my diagnosis, I would spend roughly 15 years on the birth control pill, a patch that would enable me to go away to college, to get on stage for musicals, to do basic teenage things like swim at the beach, and then eventually to start my career in television. It wasn't a perfect fix, but it was enough. I still spent about 25% of my life in pain and in fear. When I got married at the age of 29, I always kind of assumed that starting a family would be a challenge for us. So the moment I ripped off the Band-Aid of the pill, the symptoms of endometriosis barreled in like a hurricane and thus began our uphill battle toward parenthood. As we know, the only real diagnosis for endometriosis is surgical. It would take me six years to get there. For some women, it takes much, much longer, something I'm painfully aware of. After my first laparoscopy, I was diagnosed with stage four, very severe endometriosis, but I was insanely lucky. I got pregnant three weeks later. Insanely lucky. And a credit to, all, a credit to the doctors who care so deeply about us. In the 14 years that we spent trying to go, grow our family, this miracle, our now nine-year-old daughter, would be our only. I am painfully aware that this is not the case for so many of my endo sisters out there, and that's what we're here to do, to help everyone, to make sure that there's access and to make sure that it's not a luxury, the way so many of us feel when we find the doctors who tell us that there is help. In the years following the birth of our daughter through emergency C-section, my health would deteriorate. My quality of life was almost non-existent. Adenomyosis entered my story and it started rewriting the scripts of my own pages. I would get maybe one good day every couple of weeks and if that were the case, I was lucky. Excruciating pain, the story that you'll hear from so many women tonight. Vomiting, migraines, multiple kinds of migraines, hemorrhaging to the point of a near blood transfusion. All of this 
while, like so many of you, I worked live on television. I would show up to an event and I would be vomiting and people would say, oh, Sunday fun day yesterday? And I was like, if only you knew. I wish it were Sunday fun day. And there were times where I would be afraid to stand up from a hosting seat at a parade because I was afraid of the blood loss. It was awful. And then, two months ago, Dr. Sechkin and Dr. Chu performed a multi-hour, multi-organ surgery to help me get my life back. Please clap for them. <laughs> yeah, they're so special. Honestly, like the angels in, in my world right now. It also doesn't escape me that this surgery happened at the very same hospital where I was born, Lenox Hill. So two months ago, a sort of rebirth for me. I never imagined that I would be standing here hearing someone, hearing Dr. Sechkin, hearing Dr. Chu tell you your pain is real. We believe you and you're going to be okay. That is why I am here tonight. I never imagined that my personal advocacy would start before my surgical recovery was officially over. But I am here to tell you this. There is hope. You are not alone. This is a dark place. I know I've lived it for so many decades of my life. The evening of my surgery, both Dr. Sechkin and Dr. Chu visited me, reminding me of their life's work, of the mission, why we are here tonight, why they show up to work every day, the research they're doing, the surgical treatments that they are coming up with, the help that they are giving women like me and countless others. We talked about the fact that often women don't die of this, but really in so many ways they don't live. So that's what we're doing. It's a sisterhood. It's one that I never imagined I'd be a part of. As a public figure, I'm lucky. I have a platform, I have a voice, but so do each and every one of you in this room. When I was home recovering for six weeks, I heard from women all around the world, women with stories that I, that I almost couldn't believe, but that I knew were their own truths and they were speaking it and every woman used that platform. Like me, they were doubted, they were discounted, they were left untreated, they suffered in silence, but tonight, we're here to change that. We have some of the brightest lights in advocacy, some of the biggest voices who are out there joining us in this, and some of the brilliant luminaries in the medical field who will take this stage to talk about some of the work that they're doing. I am so honored to share this space with you tonight and to introduce you to some real change makers. We are really looking forward to also having a lot of fun. It is absolutely stunning in here and it's just, you can feel the love in this room tonight. I'd like to start by introducing Dr. Michael Nimeroff. He is Senior Vice President and Executive Director of OBGYN Services at Northwell Health. Dr. Nimeroff, please join us on stage.